What's up guys, back again for some more One Piece action. Today we got something a little bit different. We got uh, something a little bit exciting. We got Zoro's lineage as confirmed by Oda himself in an SBS from volume 105. So we got this cool um, family tree for Zoro right here. So we're gonna put it up. And this is uh, from OP scans and it got edited by Laleo uh, 2211 into English. So we'll start at the very top of it and kind of just work our way down. So right here at the top it says 55 years ago we got Shimotsuki Kozaburo. So if you guys remember this is the old dude from the flashback that we found out is actually the one who made Enma as well as uh, Wado Ichimonji. So he created Enma and he gave it to Odin at 4 years old and then he departed from the land of Wano with 25 people with him. Uh, one of these people that he took with him was uh, Ushimaru, so Shimotsuki Ushimaru his sister, his uh, older sister to be precise, he went, or she went with uh, Shimotsuki Kozaburo to the East Blue and uh, took Wado Ichimonji with them, you know what I mean? And also, um, for those of you who are real big fans, if you guys know who uh, Minamoto is, the carpenter, um, yeah, he went with them 55 years ago. But anyways, uh, 52 years ago, they saved the village from a group of bandits in the East Blue. So you got 10 crew members settled here and established the Shimotsuki village. So this is the village where we um, see in Zoro's, you know, like flashbacks to when he's a kid and everything with Kuina. This is the village. This is when it got established, you know, 52 years ago. And then now we're going to jump into this family tree. So we got Shimotsuki Kozaburo right here. And he uh, marries a village girl. We don't get a name of the village girl. But from that relationship, we have Shimotsuki um, Koshiro, who is Kuina's father. So we have Koshiro, and he gets with um, Kuina's mother, who, again, we don't have a name for right now, but probably won't get one. It's not really important to the story. And then you have Kuina right there, Kuina Shimotsuki. And then going over to the other side, talking about the other Shimotsuki that was on this uh, you know, trip from Wano, we have Shimotsuki Furiko. So this is, again, this is the daimyo's older sister, Ushimaru's older sister. And when they get to the village, she falls in love with a swordsman named uh, Roronoro Pinzoro. So this is Zoro's grandfather, his direct grandfather. Then they have a child, which is Roronoro uh, Arashi. And that's actually Zoro's father right there. So someone we've never seen. All these people, you know, we've never seen in story. But this is just giving us kind of their connection and everything. And so Arashi falls in love with um, Tara, who is a criminal's daughter. So we don't get a last name for her. But they have a child. And boom, that child is someone who's going to be the greatest swordsman in the world. A.K.A. Roronora Zoro. So as you can see... Uh, Zoro is a direct descendant from uh, Ushimaru, or excuse me, Shimotsuki Ushimaru, who was confirmed to be a direct descendant of someone else who's very important in Shimotsuki uh, Ryuma, aka the sword god, you know, the guy that um, Zoro fought in Thriller Bark in order to get Shusui. So, you know, we have. Ryuma, um, Shimotsuki Ryuma, who, you know, lived centuries ago, and he used uh, Shusui, and he had, a, you know, he was a great swordsman back in the time, he slayed a dragon, and then at some point, you know, he got Shusui, and he forged that into a black braid, and then he passed away, and um, he was buried in the Ringo region, but because of, you know, his renown as a swordsman, and the respect that his name carried, his family was um, given... Uh, what do you call that? Like, um, they were entrusted with um, two different regions of land. So they were entrusted with the Ringo region as well as the um, Hakumai region. Um, so the Ringo region was under Ushimaru, um, Chimotsuki Ushimaru, who we saw um, in the flashback. He had, um, what's the fox's name? Onimaru, the fox Onimaru, you know, that Zoro fights on Bandit Bridge in order to try and get Shusui back. So that guy, um, we also see him in a flashback uh, with Yamato when Yamato is a child and she gets locked in a cave. You know, when uh, Kaido gets pissed that she's going around saying that she's Odin, he puts her in a cave with all these samurai. And one of the samurai in there is Ushimaru, who had been imprisoned for not, um, you know, 
decided to bend the knee to Kaido and serving underneath him. Um, so, uh, but all of that, you know, just kind of proves that Zoro is directly, you know, blood related to Ryuma and kind of did have, I guess you could say, sort of an entitlement to Shusui, but also Enma being forged by someone else that he's related to. You know, I think it makes more sense for the story that Zoro would give back Shusui, which the Land of Wano considered to be a sacred blade. Um, you know, they considered his um, ancestor to be the sword god, so just better for him to give it back. And especially since Shusui had already been forged into a black blade, uh, it made more sense for Zoro to kind of take Enma and, you know, be able to forge it into a black blade himself, given that, um, what's his name? Kozuki Odin was unable to forge it into a black blade probably because he was killed you know so early in his life and you know maybe potentially if he'd actually gotten to fight Kaido you know all out without being distracted and getting defeated you know when um the old witch kind of turned into Momonosuke and distracted him for a second and Kaido just you know obliterated him maybe if they had actually been able to you know fully go on and duke it out um you know, Odin might have forged uh, Enma and Ame no Habakiri into black blades, but unfortunately he didn't. And then, you know, it gets passed down to uh, Momonosuke and to his sister. And then now we have Zoro getting Enma. Now Zoro, especially since, you know, he's a descendant of Ryuma, he's a descendant of the, you know, or not descendant, but he's related to the creator of the blade. Um, it would make sense for him to get it and be able to forge this black blade, but you know, just getting this family tree and seeing their connection and everything, you know, number one, biggest thing, yes, it confirms that Zoro is, you know, a direct descendant of Ryuma. I mean, I, everyone kind of, kind of already was, you know, going with it, given that what Ryuma looked like in, you know, the one-shot monsters, um, what Ushimaru looks like in the flashbacks, especially, you know, in the most recent one with Yamato in the cave, it looks like a blue haired, uh, Zoro essentially, you know what I mean? But it's kind of cool to see this and then also to kind of see the other relationships, you know, that this family tree opens up, you know, confirming that he's a Shimotsuki. So that also confirms there's, you know, um, you know, a distant relation with, um, what's his name? Um, Yasuye, who was the daimyo of Hakumai, you know, uh, when we first encountered him, he we know him as Yasu or Tony Yasu, Yasu-san, you know, he's the happy-go-lucky guy, always smiling, and then in the flashbacks, we, you know, we learned that he was actually a daimyo, and he used to be very serious and everything like that, but um, we know that he has a daughter, and this is an adopted daughter, you know, after Otoko's parents were killed. Um, he took care of her and he kind of adopted her and also ate the smile fruit because she ate the smile fruit and he didn't want her to be, you know, in that misery by herself. So it's pretty cool to see, you know, that Zora was related to them, especially, you know, when you think about how upset that Zora was when Yasu gets killed and especially... You know, he finds out about the whole smile fruit and, you know, Ebisu Town and everyone smile. That's why everybody's smiling there. Like, Zoro gets really pissed and it's kind of cool to see that connection. Like, oh, there, you know, he's a Shimotsuki. He's related to the Shimotsukis. So that's definitely kind of awesome. And then just kind of the way that Shusui found its way back to Zoro, who is related to the Shimotsukis and then brought it back to Wano and then returned it to its place of rest, you know, in Ringo or wherever they put it. Um, you know, just kind of seeing that come in full circle and just seeing how Oda was able to craft that and everything that this family tree kind of confirms is awesome. Now, I've seen some things saying the community is kind of divided for people that have already seen this. And, you know, they're kind of pissed that it didn't get revealed in story, that we didn't get this, like, in, a, in the flashback. You know, we got some of it. We got introduced to Kozaburo um, in the manga. This hasn't happened in the anime yet, I don't believe. Um, but they were mad that it's not, you know, part of the main story that it got given to us in an SBS. But, you know, after kind of going through it and seeing, you know, what 
you know, with Oda filling in the blanks and kind of showing everything and kind of giving them, you know, a little backstory of who they are and kind of what happened to them, you know, I can kind of understand why he didn't feel the need to put it in the main story. Uh, you know, nothing in particular from these um, new people that have been added in or, you know, even given names specifically kind of around on Zoro's side, um, they don't really affect the kind of main story. Like the people that do affect the main story from this family tree have been included in the main story, you know, as far as Kozuburo and making the swords and um, Kyoshiro, at, Ko Kyoshiro as, um, you know, being Kuina's father and kind of running the dojo that we see, you know, in Zoro's flashback and the initial backstory that we get for Zoro. And then, you know, also... Um, Queena, you know, her and Zoro's connection and their pledge to become the best swordsman in the world and then, you know, her death kind of fueling Zoro's desire to fulfill their, um, you know, goal. So everything that that kind of encompasses, like I said, you see that the main people that actually affected the main story are or were introduced in the main story and all these people, for the ultimate fans, you know, it's kind of cool we got it in SBS, but like I said, it doesn't really, they don't really impact the main story. Like nothing that Zoro, or um, excuse me, that Oda is giving about, you know, Zoro's grandfather or Zoro's father, other than they are related to Zoro, doesn't really show anything. The only one maybe you can make an argument for is um, Shimotsuki Furiko since she's kind of Zoro's direct connection to the Shimotsuki clan, it would have been probably cool to see her get introduced in the main um, main story manga, you know, even if it's kind of just the same way that we got introduced to Kozaburo. But again, Kozaburo's uh, contribution to the story is creating Enma and creating, um, what do you call it, Wadoichi Monji, whereas Furiko's contribution to the story is just linking... Ryuma are linking Zoro to the Shimotsukis, which I guess you could say links Zoro to Ryuma. Um, again, is that really like super important impact on the current storyline? Like trying to find the One Piece and take down the Yonko? Not necessarily. Is it important for the world building and for you know, um, you know, all of us true One Piece fans? Yes, it is. So I can understand why people are upset. I'm not necessarily upset. I'm just glad that we finally get it. Um, we understand, you know, you know, people might be comparing, oh, why did we get Sanji's backstory more? Well, I guess you could say because, um, you know, especially with what's going on in the manga with Mads and everything, um, Sanji's family really has a lot to do with that and our results of what happened with Mads and even Sanji's mother, you know, being including, included in the flashbacks, you know, we see that um, she's kind of his motivation for being kind and being nice and everything. So it makes sense why we see her. Whereas Zoro's parents, other than being his parents, you know, didn't really seem to do anything to influence him, possibly because they died. So, um, you know, so early in Zoro's life, they didn't really have a chance. Whereas like, um, Kyoshiro and Kuina definitely had an impact on him and we see that impact and that's why he's like all into swords and wants to become the greatest swordsman yada 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 but yeah you know like I said it's really cool to see this I'm glad we got this is it a bummer that it's an SBS uh, you know whatever I'll take what I can get I trust in Oda again I kind of agree he included the main characters that impacted the story in the main story and he's just, you know, giving us some fan service, filling in the blanks for us. Um, so I got to, you know, love him for that. But other than that, let me know what you guys think about, you know, all these different relations. The Shimotsuki clan, Zoro being related to, you know, the sword god, to Yasu, to Ushimaru. Um, I guess even technically distantly related to Kuina. Um, are you guys feeling it? Are you guys upset it got revealed in the SBS? Would you have rather it been revealed in the main story? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Have a wonderful day. A uh, little extra edit I forgot to add in. So um, I see this from Sandman, but a little information about Zoro's family members and their names and kind of um, 
where they probably came from. So these all relate to dice. Uh, so we have Pinzor, which is Zoro's grandfather. I guess that means double ones. Um, Furiko, which is his grandmother, a person who rolls a dice. Then we have Arashi, father, uh, triple same numbers. And then you have Terra, mother, Terazeni, vigorous, a type of charge taken by gambling companies. So all these names kind of, you know, relate to dice. We've seen Zoro play dice. He's very lucky at it. So that's just kind of cool how it all kind of ties back. Like his family has these dice names and he seems to be pretty lucky at dice. But yeah, just wanted to throw that in real quick. Hope you guys have a wonderful day.